Yes, they did it. The Amazfit Helio strap just got better, at least in some regards. I've been testing the special edition of the Amazfit Helio strap, and today I want to share with you my initial findings. One of the most important things is that Amazfit just released a new sleep stage tracking algorithm. And in addition to that, I also tested this new strap of the special edition. Now, this is not a complete review yet, but the initial data is super promising, so I didn't want to wait. By the way, for those of you that are new to the channel, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. Today we'll take a look at the heart rate tracking performance and the sleep stage tracking performance. And for this test, I wore the Helio strap actually on my wrist. I'm now wearing it on my biceps because that's where I'm testing it now, but for the testing itself, I wore it on my wrist. I should note here that I find tightening the new strap very easy on the biceps, but this new strap of the special edition is much harder to get tight on the wrist but this in some ways was still a prototype so hopefully with the final production version they will make that a bit easier but let's get to the results and as you're used to let's start with the results for indoor cycling which are displayed right here with the reference along the horizontal axis now the polar h10 is a chest strap which can generally record my heart rate very accurately and along the vertical axis we have the results for the amazfit helio strap worn on the wrist and overall, this shows a really good agreement. So each dot is a single measurement. And if the agreement is perfect, all points should be on or close to the blue line. And I would say they're generally on or close to the blue line. There are some small moments of deviation, but otherwise really good. And the correlation is also quite high at 0.99. So the maximum correlation is 1. So 0.99 is actually quite good. But let's take a look at the two individual spinning sessions. So here we have the first spinning session with the Helio strap in red and the reference in blue green. And this looks really good to be honest. Especially right here, this first dip is where many devices struggle but it's basically perfectly detected. There's some small deviation here and also here near the end of small deviation, but nothing big. And this second session potentially looks even better. The first dip isn't fully detected, but more or less perfect. This is definitely good enough. And we can actually compare this performance to that of many other devices out there. And that's displayed in this overview. Now we use that correlation value we're looking at before along the horizontal axis. And on the left here on the vertical axis, I ordered the watches from worst to best. So the further to the top right the device is, the better is its agreement with the reference. And the Amazfit Helio strap is marked in red right here. But let's zoom in a bit so we can read those labels better. And here we have that zoomed in view. So these are just the devices with a correlation of 0.95 or higher. And the Amazfit Helio strap just did really well. It's actually super close to my previous testing of the Amazfit Helio strap on the wrist. And we can actually see right here that potentially the Amazfit Helio strap on the biceps did even better. The only devices that do significantly better than the Amazfit Helio strap are different Apple watches and also some Huawei devices aren't bad. And as I recently showed, the Pixel Watch 3 and 4 are also really good heart rate trackers. But I would say that the Amazfit Helio strap, even when worn on the wrist, at least on me, does good enough for cycling indoors. But let's next take a look at the results for running. Now, before getting to the running results, Running this channel, pun intended, next to my full-time job as a scientist is neither easy or cheap. I buy most of these devices myself, like the two pairs of AirPods I recently tested, or for instance, all the Apple Watches, and I have to pay my editor Alex for most of my videos. Now, if you wanna support me, the easiest way of doing that is by using one of my affiliate links in the description below, many of which also support you by giving you the best discount possible. Or if you want to continuously support me over time without it costing you any extra, if you could bookmark my general Amazon affiliate link with command or control D in most cases and use that before making any purchase, so just click it and then make the purchase you were anyway and planning on doing that supports the channel and doesn't cost you any extra. And since you might be into running, the best app for custom running plans and life guidance during my runs, in my opinion, is the Runner app. And you can get a two week free trial for that up here or down here. But let's get back to the testing. And here we have the results for running. Still looking pretty good, I would say. Slightly more deviation. So sometimes a few BPM higher, sometimes a few BPM lower. Overall, still looking very good. Here in the very low heart rate range, we have some deviation. 
but I suspect right here it was still calibrating in the initial acquisition of the signal. Overall though, pretty good, not quite as good as for indoor cycling. Correlation is also a bit lower now, but we really need to take a look at the individual runs now. So here we have the first run and this honestly looks really good. So the Amazed with Helios trap is again in red and it follows along almost perfectly with the reference device. And also this second run looks almost perfect and indeed that small deviation we saw in the beginning in the lower heart rate range was this calibration period right here. After that, almost perfect, only this small segment had a few BPM to high heart rate, otherwise good enough. And actually this is also quite good compared to the competition as you can see right here. So again, we want the device to be as far to the top right as possible. And the Amaze with Helio strap, the special edition worn on the wrist did really well. We can actually compare this to the competition. So we again see this is super similar to my previous testing of the Amaze with Helio strap on the wrist. So no significant difference there. Here though, the Amaze with Helio strap previously tested on my biceps did a lot better. So that's one reason why you would want to wear it on your biceps like I'm doing right here. Otherwise, already pretty good performance. I don't think this makes a major difference here. Yes, you will get slightly better performance on your biceps, but it probably doesn't make a difference for the choices you make during your training. Next, let's take a look at the results for cycling. And here we have our results for biking outside. And here we have our first issues. So sometimes the Amazfit Helios trap detected a too low heart rate. That's where there's quite a few points below the blue line here, especially in the higher heart rate range. The correlation is also quite low now at 0.78. I don't know if this is due to the new fit of the new type of strap, which I prefer in terms of its flexibility. Can easily wear it both on the biceps and on the wrist, but this doesn't look amazing. I suspect there's a few rides where it struggled, so let's take a look. So here we have one bike ride that I did. This looks still quite okay, though here it struggled for a bit. This bike ride looks quite okay. There's a dropout right here. So here it stopped detecting my heart rate. Otherwise not looking too bad. This bike ride doesn't look amazing. So it's sometimes detected a too low heart rate. This one looks quite good again. Here for a while it detected a too low heart rate again. This one was also far from perfect. Some of the peaks in my heart rate weren't detected. And also this one wasn't that great. So the heart rate tracking during cycling outside somehow doesn't seem quite as good as I remember it to be before, but let's take a look at how it performed. So again, we want the device to be as far to the top right as possible. And the Amaze with Helio strap worn on the wrist in this case didn't perform that great. It's really in the middle to even sort of lower middle class of devices. But let's see where my previous testing was. So that previous testing had the other strap, which was a bit tighter on the wrist, so it wouldn't wiggle around as much and that could give it a benefit. And indeed, if we zoom into just some of the medium to better performing devices, so here we just have the ones with a correlation of 0.7 or higher, we can see that my previous testing of the Amazfit Helio strap on the wrist right here was quite a bit better than my retesting. So it's either that firmer grip on the wrist with that old type of strap that gave better performance or potentially because it also was a bit warmer outside when I tested that one, that the blood flow was a bit better in my arms. It's hard to say what is the main cause. Again, when I wore it on my biceps, it was one of the best performers. So I'm really curious to see if my retesting on the biceps with the new strap will also give such good results. Overall though, on the wrist with the new strap, I'm not super happy with the results. But again, on the biceps, it did a lot better. To close off, let's take a look at the results for weightlifting. And here we have the results for weightlifting where we see more or less the expected result that we see for many devices out there. So in the higher heart rate range, almost all points are below the blue line indicating to me at least at the moment I start to do a set of exercises and there's a lot of tension on my wrist. The Amazfit Helio strap just wasn't able to detect my heart rate. The correlation is also quite a bit lower now at 0.86. So let's take a look at some of those individual sessions. And indeed, looking at the individual weightlifting sessions, we can clearly see my peaks in heart rate as detected by the reference. And the Amazfit Helio strap just couldn't detect those peaks in heart rate. The same we see here for this second session. We can quickly put this into the perspective of other devices. So that's this overview right here. Again, we want the devices to be as far to the top right as possible. 
And the amazed at Helios Trap is a mediocre performer, but definitely not good enough for me. And it's actually very close to my previous testing. But let's zoom in a little bit. So here we have just the devices with the correlation of 0 0.8 or higher. This is my current testing and my previous testing of it is super close. So I don't think it made a huge difference what strap I used. Honestly, the only devices that are potentially good enough are either devices worn in the air, like for instance, the PowerBeast Pro 2 or the AirPods Pro 3 or different Apple devices. But Apple devices sometimes have dropouts when you're lifting weights. So when there's so much tension on your wrist, it recognizes it as very poor signal quality. So it just removes that data. So overall, I would recommend just use a chest strap or jucks for short. So those were generally pretty solid results, I would say, though for biking outside and weightlifting, there could still be some improvements, though I do expect that when wearing it on my biceps like I'm doing right here, the results will be a lot better. But what about sleep stage tracking? Did that improve with the new sleep stage tracking algorithm? Let's have a look. And here we have an overview of the sleep stage tracking results with on top the sleep stages as measured by the reference and on the left the sleep stages as measured by the Amaze with Helios trap. Now this is an initial test, so this is for a total of five nights. So definitely not comprehensive, I would say, but it will give us an initial impression. Now the reference we're using is the ZMAX EEG headband, which was specifically designed for sleep stage tracking or sleep tracking and can actually measure my brain waves. It's imperfect, especially when it comes to detecting awake time. So we'll ignore that column right here, but the others are pretty reliable. So basically we can see what percentage of each of the sleep stages according to the reference was detected as each sleep stage by the Helio strap. So first of all, we see that about 80% of what was deep sleep according to the reference was also deep sleep according to the Amaze with Helio strap. So that's pretty good. Light sleep agreement was also pretty good at about 86%. However, where it struggled still was REM sleep detection. Only 50% of what was REM sleep according to the reference was also REM sleep according to the Helio strap, and the other half was detected as light sleep. So definitely imperfect still. This is the sleep stage where many devices struggle. So REM sleep seems to be something where only a few brands are doing a good job at, and I'll show you that in a second. Overall though, pretty solid performance for the other sleep stages. And we can really see that Amazfit is moving in the right direction. So let's compare this performance to that of many other devices I've tested. And you can see that in this overview right here. So on the bottom, we have the average agreement over those three sleep stages we are looking at. And on the left, I took the worst out of those three sleep stages individually for each device. So the further to the top right the device is, the better is its agreement with the reference. So we have the best devices up here, but the Amazfit Helio Strap, this special edition, is actually doing quite well. It's not amongst the absolute best devices, but also not amongst the mediocre to bad performing devices. It's actually quite close, at least based on this initial test, to the performance of the old whoop strap algorithm and on the lower end of the FIBIT devices I previously tested. So it's really not great yet, but definitely getting better. Now the top five or six brands at the moment, I would say are Apple, Pixel or Google, Aura, Whoop, Eight Sleep and Sleep Two or Nuqua. So that will be the six total best performing brands at the moment. And no matter what device you get from these brands, you'll probably get the same sleep stage tracking because the algorithm there is much more important than the measurements that they take because it's so easy to measure vitals during the night because you're not moving much, your heart rate is really low, so it tends to be really easy. It's really more the algorithm behind. Now, out of all of these, on a daily basis, I use myself the Aura Ring the eight sleep pod and the whoop strap. These are used for my personal tracking. Also due to my personalized circumstances, it's not possible to wear things on my wrist every day because I'm testing all these devices. So these are the devices I actually use, but I think also Fitbit, Google, Apple and the Sleep 2 app will give you great sleep stage tracking. My favorite overall sleep improvement device is the eight sleep pod because it both has great sleep stage tracking pretty decent heart rate and heart rate variability tracking, and you don't need to wear anything on your body. So it's something that goes around your mattress, has a lot of sensors in it, but can also actively cool and heat each side of the bed independently, thereby improving my sleep significantly. So in summer, I let it cool me down a lot because I'm way too hot, I'm a hot sleeper, 
and it does it independently for your partner's side. So if you have a partner, they can set the temperature to their preferred setting. And this has always been a struggle for me because I tend to need much more cooling during the night than any partner I've ever had. Now the A Sleep Pod is really quite expensive. So if you want the best discount possible and support the channel, there's an affiliate link up here or down here for the A Sleep Pod. But back to the testing, is the Helio strap good enough in sleep stage tracking? Well, it's getting better. If you want the absolute best sleep stage tracking, it's not the device yet, but I'm happy to see that they're improving and that they're moving closer and closer to the top performers. At least that's what it seems like based on this initial test. So it definitely seems at least like an improvement over the old algorithm. I would say that if this also turns out to be true in long-term testing, this is close to second tier performance. Not quite up there yet with the big boys, but getting better. If Amazfit keeps improving this, that could make the Helio strap one of the most recommended devices out there. And at $99, it's already great value for money at the moment. I'd really be curious also about your experience with the Helio strap as well. Let us know in the comments below. Now again, if you want to support the channel and also support your own wallet, use one of my affiliate links in the description below, whether it's an Amazfit Helio strap, an Apple Watch, an H Sleep Pod, a Whoop strap, an Aura Ring, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper or a laundry detergent. You can also become a YouTube member, which is like Patreon on YouTube, and this gives you early access to some of my videos. Now, given that you watched this video, I think you will like this video on the Whoop Strap or this video on Apple's new sleep score.